जय राधा माधवा कुंज जय राधा माधवा कुंज Gopi chana bala bha girid bar dhari Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi chana bala bha giridhar dhari Gopi chana bala bha giridhar dhari Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे प्रेमानंदे हरि बो जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिब्रज काचार्य अष्टतर सत श्री श्रीमद हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस अभय चरण अरविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाद की इस कौन फाउंडर आचार्य श्रील प्रभुपाद की Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, Srila Prabhu Pad Ki, Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrindi Ki, Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki, Prem Shikha Hoshi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda, Shri Advaita Gadatha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath, Shyam Kun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki, Vrindavan Maya Purdam Ki, Ganga Maya Yamuna Maya Ki, Tosi Maharani Bhakti Devi Ki, Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki. All glories to assembled devotees. All glories to assembled devotees. All glories to assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru, Sri Gauranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane 
Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Odirayat Nusta Praeshu Vabadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtuki we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 9, entitled The Passing Away of Bhishma Dev, and this morning, text number 11. Bandhu Putran Upasinan Prashraya Prema Sangata Abhyachastanuragasher Adibhute na chakshusha Panduputra nupasinan Prashraya prema sangatan Abhyachastanuragashayar Andibhutena Chakshusha Pandu Putran Upasinan Prashraya Prema Sangatan Abhyachastanu Ragashrayar Andibhutena Chakshusha Pandu, the late father of Maharaj Yudhisthira and his brothers, Putran, the sons of Upasinan, sitting silently nearby, Prashraya, being overtaken 
prema, in feelings of love, sangatan, having gathered, abhyas, abhyasta, abhyas, abhyasta, congratulated, anuraga, feelingly, ashray, by tears of ecstasy, Andi Bhutana, overwhelmed, Chakshusha, with his eyes. Translation, the sons of Maharaj Pandu were sitting nearby, were sitting silently nearby, overtaken with affection for their dying grandfather. Seeing this, Bhishma Dev congratulated them with feeling. There were tears of ecstasy in his eyes, for he was overwhelmed by love and affection. You can repeat. The sons of Maharaj Pandu were sitting silently nearby, overtaken with affection for their dying grandfather. Seeing this, Bhishma Dev congratulated them with feeling. There were tears of ecstasy in his eyes, for he was overwhelmed by love and affection, purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. When Maharaj Pandu died, his sons were all small children, and naturally they were brought up under the affection of their elderly members of the royal family, specifically by Bhishma Dev. Later on, when the Pandavas were grown up, they were cheated by cunning Duryodhan and company, and Bhishma Dev, although he knew that the Pandavas were innocent, and were unnecessarily put into troubles, could not take the side of the Pandavas for political reasons. At the last stage of his life, when Bhishma Dev saw his most exalted grandsons, headed by Maharaj Yudhisthira, sitting very gently at his side, the great warrior grandfather could not check his loving tears, which were automatically flowing from his eyes. He remembered the great tribulation suffered by his most pious grandsons. Certainly he was the most satisfied man because of Eudestir's being enthroned in place of Duryodhan, and thus he began to congratulate them. Oma Jnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadama Yam Dadati Swapadantikam Pandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvayatam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Scha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Korange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye 
vancha kaupa terubhyasya kripa sindhu bhayevacha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha jaya shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasate Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sutta Goswami's narrating to the sages of Naimasharanya describing this passing away of Bhishma Dev. Bhishma Dev, of course, had the blessings of his father Maharaj Santanu that he could choose the particular time when he would depart from the world. That's an interesting benediction to be given. Huh? Would we like to choose a particular time when you can leave the world? We don't know. Usually we're just forced into a situation. Anyway, Grandfather Bhishma was waiting uncomfortably for an auspicious time for his departure. His body was filled with arrows. All the arrows of Arjun. And the arrows of Arjun had made a bed for him. So not a very comfortable bed, you can imagine, like laying on a bed of nails, only worse. The arrows are actually pierced into you. So anyway, Grandfather Bhishma Dev was in this condition and he was approached by Lord Krishna along with Maharaj Yudhisthira and the Pandavas. Because Maharaj Yudhisthira was feeling greatly disturbed he was feeling himself responsible for the whole battle of Kurukshetra. He thought because he wanted the kingdom and that's why the battle took place and that's why millions of people died. So Grand, um, Maharaj Yudhisthira was feeling very remorseful, very much regretful that this whole incident had taken place and he thought he should never have allowed it to happen. And Lord Krishna had tried to pacify him, but actually Lord Krishna likes to give the credit to his devotees. Lord Krishna, of course, is the super soul in the heart of all living entities. And if Lord Krishna had wanted to pacify Maharaj Yudhisthira, he could have arranged it. But Lord Krishna likes to give the credit to his devotees. And up to this particular point, Grandfather Bhishma had not really had the opportunity to reveal his glories. And some people wonder, what, is, what did Grandfather Bhishma, what did he do? Why is he one of the Mahajans, you know? Why is he one of the twelve Mahajans? What did he do? So he did it all here on the bed of arrows. He enlightened. Maharaj Yudhisthira and he spoke on many different subject matters to explain to Maharaj Yudhisthira what his duties were as the ruler. And Srila Prabhupada describes how happy actually and Sukadeva as Sutta Goswami rather describes also that Bhishma Dev is in ecstasy seeing Maharaj Yudhisthira become the king, become the ruler, take the throne from Duryodhan. Duryodhan could have given some mercy to the Pandavas, but he didn't give anything. He said, not even enough land to go through the eye of the needle. That was Duryodhan's thinking. So he wanted the war. He didn't want to just make some uh, adjustment and pacify the Pandavas and give them a village here and there or a little, he said nothing, right? Not even ashes. So there had to be the battle of Kurukshetra 
and the result of the battle of Kurukshetra was that grandfather Bhishma fell on the battlefield. Of course that's glorious to fall on the battlefield and he has he has that power to wait for the auspicious time for his departure and this allows the Pandavas to come with Lord Krishna and to sit there and to be with grandfather Bhishma. Although they had fought on the opposite sides there's still this wonderful loving feeling between them and Prabhupada explains how grandfather Bhishma actually wanted to help the Pandavas but due to political intrigue he was not able to actually arrange any support for the Pandavas. Politics, right? Political intrigue, politics. Very nasty business, right? The Chanakya says never trust women and politicians. So anyway, he must have had his own experience. He was certainly experienced with politicians. The king, the, who was their king at that time? Okay. So anyway, he had his dealings with politicians and he was somehow, he understood, you know, not very easy thing to deal with them. So, uh, Bhishma Dev was in that situation. He should have been the king himself, but because Bhishma st wanted to keep his father happy, he promised he would not marry. So, in that way, Maharaj Santanu could accept Satyavati as his wife and he could conceive children in the womb of Satyavati. But then, there were also still problems because Satyavati produced, well, Vichitraviriya, first of all, was their child, right? Vichitraviriya is the child of Satyavati. Yeah? And Richard Tavir is their child, so he becomes a king, but he cannot, he doesn't have any children. And he dies early, prematurely. And so he had, he had Amba and Ambika as his wives. Ambalata, as, which one was not his wife? There were three sisters, one was supposed to Ambika. Amba and Ambika were the wives. Amba went and did sati. Yes, yeah, so it was Amba who was supposed to marry the other man and then she came back and she wanted to marry Bhishma and Bhishma of course refused and then she gave up her body but came back to get revenge on Bhishma <laughs> to arrange his death and when she came in front of Bhishma then Bhishma would not fight and that was when Arjuna could fill his body with arrows and so Bhishma fell on the battlefield but uh, before that we were talking about Vichitravirya they wanted a successor, a son and the first son was Dhritarashtra. So Dhritarashtra should have been king, but he's blind. So a blind king, no good. So then they had Pandu. So Pandu became the king. But then Pandu got cursed. Pandu was doing something and uh, hunting. And he shot a deer. But that deer was actually some yogi who had taken the form of a deer so that he could have a conjugal relationship with his wife. Not very appropriate for a yogi and a yogini to have conjugal relationships so they changed their form into deers and in this way they had the conjugal relationship but, but uh, unfortunately Pandu came and shot the deer and so then the deer took the human form again, took the form of the yogi and told Pandu that 
as you have shot me when I was trying to enjoy with my wife, when you try to enjoy with your wife, you will also die. Tit for tat, right? Something similar to like what happened to uh, Maharaj Dasarath, the father of Lord Ramachandra, that he was cursed at, because Dasarath shot the boy going to get water for his mother and father. And so he went back and told the, the father and mother of the boy, father and mother were both blind and el elderly age, unable to take care of themselves. The boy was carrying them everywhere and taking care of them. And Maharaj Dasarath shot the boy unknowingly, thinking, thinking he was an animal. So he had to go back and tell the old couple that your son is dead and he's not coming back. And he explained what happened. And so the, fa the elderly man said to Maharaj Dasarath, it's a great sin you have committed. And as I am going to have to die without my son present, you will also die without your son being present. So usually when the father departs, the son should be there to take care of any last will, take any final instructions from the father. And here you see grandfather Bhishma, he's going to depart. So, so many other great sages all came to be with him and to spend their time with him and to hear his final instructions before he left the world. So. Uh, Dhritarashtra should have become king, but he was blind. Pandu became king, he got cursed. So then the throne came back to Dhritarashtra. And Dhritarashtra naturally wants his sons to be the kings. He wants that they should be the successor after him. But the Pandavas are there. And the Pandavas were very young children at the time of the death of their father. They could not become the king. But they don't stay young children forever. They're not like the four Kumaras, right? They grow up and they grow up and they want to be, they want to rule. They're Kshatriyas and Kshatriyas have to have some land. They have to have some kingdom. They have to have something to rule. You cannot be a king with no kingdom. <laughs> so what to do? So they asked. Duryodhan, they asked Dhritarashtra, you know, you give something, we have to have something. So Duryodhan tried different things. He sent them to the place with the shellac house, tried to have them killed there, set fire to them when they're in the house of shellac. Tried so many different things. Finally, it comes to Kurukshetra war. And the Kurukshetra war is the ultimate this is ultimate end of everything, settle everything, go to war. So they go to war and the Pandavas come out victorious and Grandfather Bhishma is very happy that the Pandavas have come out victorious because he's aware how much suffering they've gone through. You can feel something of the love and the caring which is here at the time of the departure of Bhishma Dev. There's no hatred on the side of the Pandavas. The Pandavas are not thinking, he didn't help us, he let us suffer, he didn't do, he even fought against us. No, the Pandavas are not thinking like that. And ba B Grandfather Bhishma is also not thinking like, he's not thinking that I was fighting against these Pandavas, they're the ones who killed me, they're the one who put me all these arrows in my body just because they want a kingdom. No, there's, there's genuine concern for each other. Caring is very important in, and it comes out in these kind of incidents in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is teaching us the importance of loving dealings and caring for each other. Even though we may be on opposite sides. Just like Srila Prabhupada said, every year 
the leaders should come to Mayapur and discuss how to create unity out of diversity. So Kurukshetra, there was diversity. There was a lot of diversity between the Kauravas and the Pandavas. Although they were all Kauravas, they're really all one family, they're one line. But there's big difference, there's a lot of difference between them. But they come together. Grandfather Bhishma and the Pandavas along with Lord Krishna and they come and they talk and they settle everything. And by meeting together and discussing properly, they're able to resolve all of their conflicts and, the, and everything becomes clear. After Maharaj Yudhisthira took instruction from Grandfather Bhishma, he understood what was his duty. He understood what he had to do that he had to go back, he had to rule. And Grandfather Bhishma explained to him, everything which happened, it's the will of the Supreme. It cannot be avoided. We have to understand the plan of Krishna behind everything. And we have to go on with our life and make the best of the situation to become fully Krishna conscious. So Grandfather Bhishma shows his loving concern for the Pandavas. It's described he was shedding tears of ecstasy. Prima, right? It's mentioned. Eh? Prashraya Prima Sangatan. So Prima, that love the ecstasy of love. We want to develop that prem for Krishna. We want to see Krishna in the heart of everyone. And developing this loving concern and caring, thinking, how I can help this person? What can I do for their benefit? That is a devotee. Devotee naturally thinks about others. He's concerned for their well-being. What can we do to help them, to bring them more closer, bring them into Krishna consciousness? When we go out for preaching, when we go for Sankirtan, we want to think like that. How can we help the conditioned souls. How can we give them Krishna consciousness? How to awaken them? The, this is a missionary work, right? We are all missionaries. Prabhupada had a mission and we are following in that mission to distribute Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement in the form of the chanting of the holy names everywhere. Lord Chaitanya's desire, every town and village, Nagar Odigram, right? We want to go everywhere to bring Krishna consciousness, within, which is with Krishna is in the heart of all living entities. If we make distinction, if we're thinking friend, enemy, then this is not Krishna consciousness. If we're thinking, I like this one, I don't like that one, this is not Krishna consciousness. This is not the mood of the devotee. We have to see everyone equally. As Krishna himself says in the Bhagavad Gita, Samoham sarva bhuteshu namedveshosti napriya. Yebajanti tu mambakta mai te te shu chapya. Krishna, Lord Krishna is saying, I envy no one. I am equal to everyone. But whoever renders service to me, he is a friend. He is in me and I am in him. So Lord Krishna 
sees everyone equally. But at the same time, he has a special love, a special feeling for his devotees. Prabhupada explains, just like a mother, she likes all children. But the mother has special love for her own child. And Prabhupada said, it's natural. It's not discrimination. It's not being prejudiced. It's just natural that the mother will have special love for her own child. In the same way, Lord Krishna has special love for his devotees. And who is a devotee? Everyone who comes to this Krishna consciousness movement is a devotee. Everyone who chants the holy name, even one time, Lord Ramachandra said, anyone who chants my name even one time, I can never reject them. I can never give them up. So we have to develop this bigger vision, broader vision, to see everyone part and parcel of Krishna and members of the Krishna consciousness movement. And thinking also how we can relate to them how we can have a nice, friendly relationship, friendly dealings with them. Kali Yuga, the age of quarrel, right? That's the symptoms of Kali Yuga. Because the qualities of the Kali Yuga become manifest. Lazy, misguided, unlucky and always disturbed. So this is the influence of the present times. We're always disturbed. Nobody has peace of mind. We have to take shelter of the holy name. Peace of mind. Every devotee should have peace of mind. We're not influenced by the age of Kali. Devotees shouldn't be lazy or misguided or unlucky. No. Devotees are all hardworking. We're not misguided. We have the best direction coming from this, the great Acharyas in the line of disciplic succession. And we're not unlucky. We're the most fortunate people because we have come to Krishna consciousness. We are the most fortunate to be given the supreme occupation. Lord Krishna, as, as stated earlier in Srimad Bhagavatam by Sutta Goswami, Savai Pumsam Paro Dharmo Yato Bhakti Radhoksaji Ahaitaki Apritihata Yayatma Suprasiddhati. The supreme occupation for all humanity to attain is loving service unto the Supreme Lord. Such service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. So devotional service is described that the qualities, what we have to come, the level we have to come to for devotional service. Ahaitaki and apratyata, unmotivated. Everybody is so motivated. We are so motivated by our own lust, by our own greed. We have to conquer over these things. We have to get over these obstacles in devotion. The desire, the ambition, what we want to try to get for ourselves. What we actually want is to become ahaitaki, unmotivated. We simply want Krishna's service in any condition. We should be satisfied to serve Krishna in any position, in any situation. Just let me be the servant. Right? We're coming, we come to Krishna Consciousness, the mission is to become servant, 
we want to be the servant and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says servant of the servant of the servant many many times the servant we should be satisfied in that way so un getting rid of this motivation motivation we want position we want respect we want prestige this is the maya this is the illusion but at the same time somebody has to do it somebody has to be the king just like Maharaj Yudhisthira he didn't really want to be the king but he had to do it Krishna wanted it Krishna wanted somebody has to lead somebody has to be in charge in every everywhere there has to be some organization there has to be some management management not a very pleasant word managers some you know people we don't like to hear the word sometimes even managers Ooh. but we like leaders right leadership is also in managers are needed we need the management a very diff very difficult job to do it very thankless task and we should appreciate the managers who take on that responsibility it's not an easy job not an easy task to manage uh, but even great not only do we need managers we need leaders and everyone can do that every one of us should be leaders we should show the right example taking care of others it's not just the job of the managers to be caring it's the job of every devotee to be caring and to be loving we all have that responsibility to do some service for Krishna so at this particular time while we're the, we are in this very unique situation with you know so many restraints and so many things like social distancing don't get too close <laughs> yeah. don't get too close social distancing how is it possible to have care to show care and to have loving dealings you can't get close to people it's it's a challenge but somehow where there's a will there's a way somehow you you can do it at least we can speak to each other even though we may have to speak at a distance to each other <laughs> we should speak caringly kindly and with concern for each other very important so we see the Pandavas they came there to be with grandfather Bhishma for his departure they wanted to get rid of any of the obstacles if there's any feeling bitter feeling get rid of it before he departs just like Prabhupada met with his god brothers before he left the world and he asked them he said if I've committed any offenses against you please forgive me he said you know sometimes in the course of preaching I would criticize and I would maybe criticize some things about Godia Mat and like that but then Prabhupada said please forgive me in the course of my preaching if I've offended you you know they were very humble the God brothers they said no 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 you did not you did not offend us but Prabhupada wanted to make sure that at least he offered his apologies to them that I've offended you in any way and and Bhakti Tirthar Swami also before he departed you know Bhakti Tirthar Swami was suffering from cancer for some time and so he was de departing and he was telling devotees that before we depart we want to get rid of any bitterness which is there with anybody because if the if we have any bad feelings then that will be a big obstacle to where we go in our next life you know 
We, but if you get rid of everything, there's no bitter feeling, then, then you can really go forward, you can go on to a very great destination. So you see also similar here with Grandfather Bhishma and the Pandavas, Lord Krishna. It's very important that they all came together and they could discuss. Hare Krishna. Any question, comment? Yes, Prabhu? How did he give such a benediction? Well, he's a very powerful personality, right? He could, he, he could have a marital relationship with Mother Ganga. You can get the Ganga for a wife. He's not, a, not an ordinary person, you know. He's a very, very great king with, with great powers. And then he could of the Ganga for a wife, so if he wants to give this kind of benediction, then he can. He can do it. You have to understand, you know, he was powerful enough to become king and to have married, live married life with Mother Ganga, then certainly he could give a benediction also to his son, like that. Yeah? They're not ordinary people, these people, the Pandavas and uh, these kings, they could go just like when Ma Maharaj Yudhisthira did Rajasuya sacrifice, Arjuna went into Jambudweep. You know, we can't even go into other parts of Bharat Vars. There are other regions of Bharat Vars which we cannot enter. But Arjuna, he could go all the way into Jambudweep. And he collected gold and brought the gold back for Maharaj Yudhisthira's Rajasuya. And so Maharaj Parikshit, Maharaj Yudhisthira, they were ruling not just Bharat Vars, not just India. They were ruling even the Bhumandala. The whole of Bhumandala was under their rule. So they were great kings. So similarly Maharaj Santanu, it's a great personality. I tend to go loca. I think no, if he's got some bitterness in their mind, it's certainly not going to help him go to Goloka. You have to get rid of that before it goes to Goloka. That's why we said you have to be very careful. Get rid of all of these things, all the obstacles, all the anartas. Very important. Don't keep anything like that in the heart. Yes? Is it proper? 
Oh, is it proper to preach? Well, if you repeat what you've heard from the parampara, then it's okay. If you're repeating what you've heard through the line of the, through the devotees from the scriptures, we don't preach our own thinking. You have to preach what you've heard and what you've taken from the the great acharyas, from our founder acharya and from the other great teachers and we repeat that. So what we repeat must be bona fide. You don't want to be sp speculating and you don't want to be inventing, making up your own philosophy. You have to repeat. The process is based on hearing, right? Different kinds of evidence. When we say pratyaksha, not very Im not important. Our senses are imperfect. Anuman, also no good. The mind. But shabda, that's important. We use shabda to establish the truth. We have to hear the truth and we repeat what we heard. Sukadeva Goswami says, I'm just telling you what I heard from others. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, when he's asked to do something, to describe something, yeah, I'll tell you what I've heard from others. He never invents anything. He didn't make up, he didn't say this how I understand it. He didn't say, I think like this. As soon as you say, I think, that's wrong. You just say, I heard. I have heard from others. That's important. We give the importance to hearing. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave importance to hearing. We also try to hear. Krishna says in seventh chapter, Now hear from me, O Arjuna, how by practicing yoga and knowledge of me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. That's the first verse of the seventh chapter. Krishna's beginning to speak on bhakti yoga. He says, now hear. So the hearing is important. So we should, when we preach, you don't say, I think, or in my understanding, you have to say, I have heard from others, from the acharyas. Okay? Hare Krishna. Okay, Srila Prabhupada, ki jai. Srimad Bhagavatam, ki jai.